Should the federal government bail out the auto industry? Mitt Romney, former Massachusetts governor and former Republican candidate for president, says absolutely not. He joins us this morning. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, Maggie. I would like to start by reading your words back to you from your New York Times op-ed piece this week. Quote, without the bailout, Detroit will need to drastically restructure itself. With it, the automakers will stay the course, the suicidal course of declining market shares, insurmountable labor and retiree burdens, technology atrophy, product inferiority, and never-ending job losses. Detroit needs a turnaround, not a check. Do you stand by those words, even seeing Wall Street's violent reaction to the turmoil in the auto industry? There's no question but that if you just write a check uh, that you're going to see these companies go out of business ultimately. Instead, we have to help these companies restructure, stay in business, but restructure, shed the unnecessary costs, make them competitive with the transplants and the foreign cars, and by virtue of doing that, make sure they stay in business long term. This shouldn't be a check. This should really be a turnaround effort. The government's going to be a partner in this. We don't want them going out of business, but we don't want them to continue business as usual. There have been a lot of editors, uh, excuse me, letters to the editor of the New York Times in response to your piece. I, I'd like to just read you one from the Lieutenant Governor of Michigan. Mr. Romney's suggestion that our economy would be best served by a big three bankruptcy is a breathtaking assertion of economic Darwinism made more shocking by his roots in Michigan, you're the son of an auto exec, where hundreds of thousands of jobs rely on the auto industry. So despite the dire consequences to our economy and all the jobs lost, you say so be it? Well, let's be clear about this. Bankruptcy does not mean closing it down, liquidating it, or losing any jobs. The course that this industry is on and has been on for the last couple of decades has been job loss after job loss, losing market share, unprofitability. What I'm talking about is using the court or an out-of-court settlement or perhaps special legislation to help these companies get rid of the excess costs that make them non-competitive, that mean ongoing job losses, get these companies in a competitive position so they can stay and grow and add jobs. That's the course. And, uh, and so I, I know there's a frequent uh, uh, thought that when you hear the word bankruptcy, that means going out of business. Just the opposite is what I'm calling for. Help them get rid of the excess costs so they can stay in business. Let's talk about uh, previous bailouts that have been successful. We think of Lee Iacocca back in 1978, who took a bailout, paid it back within three years, and returned the, that company to profitability. Why can't they do that again? Well, that was uh, the, the kind of restructuring I think that has to happen. Uh, helping these companies go through either an out-of-court settlement or going through bankruptcy court or again special legislation, uh, giving the government the tools to help them get on track or uh, new leadership to help them get on track and get rid of the excess labor costs, the excess retiree costs, the excess real estate costs. Helping them shed these costs is what's essential. I listened to uh, former uh, CEO of GE, Jack Welch, last night saying the same thing. These companies have to become cost competitive or they're going to go away. And that's why it's so important to help them in, in much the same way that Chrysler was helped before. Don't just give them a check and expect them to spend it the way they've been spending the last few years. Governor Mitt Romney, as always, thank you for your time. Thanks, Maggie. Here's Jeff. Maggie, thank you very much. President-elect Barack Obama is starting to build his cabinet.